Hey Dunge Bags, what's going on? It's Landon Remixes here, and it is time for the 31st edition of Rapid Fire Reviews, the first of 2020, and the first of the decade. In case you didn't know, Rapid Fire Reviews is my series where I essentially recap the last month in electronic music, at least the stuff that I've been listening to when it comes to EPs and albums, sometimes mixtapes and compilations as well. Although in this video I will be talking about a few projects that came out prior to December 2019 that I somehow just completely missed. This edition is also going to be quite a bit shorter than a lot of my recent rapid fire review videos simply because December tends to be a pretty dry month for releases. While actually more projects than I had originally anticipated came out throughout the month of December, the list is still pretty short, so I may end up spending a little bit more time per album or EP than I usually do in this series, but uh, you know, we'll see. But without further ado, let's just get into it. I'm honestly really surprised at myself for not even knowing this EP existed until the very end of the year, but if I'm being truthful, I can't really say I feel I was missing out on all that much, given I enjoyed this project a bit more than Tiesto's previous couple attempts, uh, simply because it's dance music and it doesn't necessarily feel like it's pandering to a pop audience or anything like that. It's refreshing in that regard. While this EP is somewhat enjoyable for what it is, being a callback to the festival style music Tiesto was making in 2013, 2014, uh, the formulaic nature of it still gets in the way a little bit of my enjoyment. There's even a song on this EP that sounds like it's blatantly trying to be Secrets 2.0. A lot of you probably already know, I was a really big fan of the last Zess album, Closer. I mean, I just placed it in my top 25 albums of the year. So you can probably imagine my disappointment when this EP pretty much just went down the Flume route. Obviously, can't knock artists being influenced by Flume. He's a very influential artist, but it just feels so blatant on this project that it's unenjoyable to me. Um, even the, the closer of the EP sounds like a blatant rip off of Helix and I, I just can't. I really can't. And closing off my pre-December releases, I've got this album from William Black, which is another one that I'm very surprised I didn't hear about until the coming of the new year, actually. Going into this album, I was honestly expecting something of a Weenie Hut Jr.'s Illenium, but uh, the beginning of this album actually threw me on a loop with some really great tunes. I especially love the ones with uh, Micah Martin, but uh, then as the album progressed, it just became more and more like Illenium and Midas style. I want to see more of that uniqueness kind of take form with future William Black projects. I think he's a really talented producer, but in my opinion, he's really going to have to break out of that mold to become his own. I really shouldn't review ambient music at all because I really honestly don't know how to review it. There's ambient music that I enjoy, and there's ambient music that I don't enjoy, but how to critique it exactly is kind of beyond me. When it comes to Collider, I certainly didn't not enjoy this album. There's definitely some cool and interesting textures that Exist Strategy uses across this project that made my ears perk up, but uh, beyond that, you know, it's an ambient album. I think it was fitting that G. Jones referred to this EP as an epilogue to The Ineffable Truth because it really does feel like kind of a bookend to that project. It feels like an extension of the sonic direction of that album, that kind of experimental ravey sound meeting bass music head to head. And I will say I do enjoy all of the originals on this EP quite a bit, even if I feel their quality doesn't quite land on par with that of the tunes on Ineffable Truth, but uh, yeah, enjoyable project nonetheless. <laughs> Given that this is the first Varian album we've gotten in over four years, I was really excited to listen through this project, and I can't say I was completely disappointed, but I wasn't 
totally satisfied either. The second industrial revolution honestly feels more like a follow-up to the Nick Kalar album La Douleur Exquise uh, because it's so heavily centered around Nick's talents in orchestration, sound design, cinematics, and while those skills are generally something that I can really appreciate, especially in a storytelling album format, I feel like this project would have been more enjoyable for me had those skills translated more into making some like evil, unique dance music like Varian's older stuff, like My Prayers Have Become Ghosts. I guess this is really the closest thing we got to a studio album from Burial in the 2010s, and given that I didn't really follow his singles and EPs in that time frame, uh, this compilation definitely came as a nice surprise and a really solid listen, though I wouldn't quite say it's on par with the self-titled or untrue, especially in terms of listenability. This is some absolutely top-tier, ambient, down-tempo, and garage music. Definitely wouldn't miss out on it. Going through this thing is like traveling to another plane of existence. Definitely a journey. <laughs> This EP's name feels a bit ironic to me considering it's, in my opinion, more structured and formulaic than a lot of Mr. Bill's previous projects, but maybe that's the point. Can't deny Mr. Bill as a fantastic producer, but on the downside, I can't say I enjoyed this EP overall all that much, especially not as much as something like Applefenia or the Recency Effect. <laughs> What a surprise, it's another BT ambient album, and though this project I, I feel isn't quite or maybe even close to being on par with uh, the Untitled album, I, I would say I enjoy this a bit more than Between Here and You. Feels like it has a little bit more substance, a little bit more melodic elements to latch onto, but uh, not really for me overall. <laughs> I feel like this EP, much like something like Weeble Wobble by Eliminate, is an excellent example that we need more creatives in the dubstep scene kind of doing 128, and dub loads, in my opinion, is certainly no exception to that rule. I had a ton of fun listening through this EP, kind of dancing along with it and recognizing dub loads' unique sound design kind of in context with it. It's definitely a worthwhile listen. <laughs> This album, as flawed as it is, feels like a good bookend to the Foreign Beggars discography. It's simultaneously a sentimental goodbye wave from the group, while also being a decent reminder of the group's talent, uh, why Metropolis and Volgatron have so much chemistry, while also having enough weak points to remind us why it might be better for this group to go their separate ways. Nonetheless, found Matriarchy to be an especially enjoyable listen, especially in the first half of the project. On my first listen through this EP, it reminded me a lot of Lucid in that it's three tracks and kind of centric around cars. However, the more I dig into it, the more it just reminds me of Eclipse in that it's kind of lackluster, not all that great hybrid trap music, and Mach 5 actually sounds very, very similar to Eclipse on its own, given I don't think it's absolutely terrible or anything like that, but it's just not for me. This EP has definitely helped further cement Peekaboo in my mind as one of the most interesting acts in bass music right now. Minimal yet still wacky and unique takes on dubstep house, maybe even a little bit of hybrid trap on this EP, and some of the songs are like super haunting too. Definitely worth giving a listen to if you haven't yet. I guess this album to me was affirmation that I didn't necessarily need to prove that Scandroid could make a very 80s sounding pop album, given he does that sound so well that it's honestly a bit scary. Um, I can see my parents enjoying this album a lot, but it's not really my cup of tea, and the remixes don't really bring out the songs in any kind of new light either, being that they mostly just tie into that same synthwave sound. 
yeah, this one's going to be a hard pass from me, though there are a couple decent cuts on this EP. For the most part, it seems that Snails has abandoned whatever level of uniqueness he had left to just become another Wooly or Company or any number of these Britain style DJs. Um, yeah, not into this project at all. <laughs> Though I feel this remix album was long overdue at the point that it released, in a way I'm kind of glad that San Holo and the Bitbird team waited as long as they did to put this project out. I feel that the hype of the original album has died down enough to make me feel somewhat nostalgic about the original project, even if it's not even two years old at this point. Beside that though, Honestly, what a great remix album. I feel like pretty much every party involved killed it, and even though there are a few songs on this project that are remixed multiple times, I found myself enjoying it as a, you know, full package. I honestly don't think there's a single remix on this album that I don't like. Uh, favorites for me, though, are probably Iobon's, Jaren's, and Melv's. <laughs> Though I can't say I'm absolutely huge on this album, I will say this is the closest I've seen Lone Moon come to making a project that really encapsulates her abilities in singing, rapping, and production all at the same time, at least in my opinion significantly more than the last couple albums, so it's a step forward. <laughs> On the positive end of things, I will say I like how this EP kind of strips things back, feels a lot less overproduced than the last couple Nash projects, and a little bit more homemade, which I like. On the negative side of things though, I really don't think the lyrics are all that good, and to add salt in the wounds, they can be mind-numbingly repetitive too. If I'm being totally honest, I didn't really enjoy this EP all that much on an unironic level. Uh, the only track that I really love is the Weeble Wobble VIP, which I still didn't think was that great compared to the original. Um, Barely Alive's take is okay. I like the, the, you know, the 80s elements that they always put in their tracks, and, uh, you know, I'm not crazy about the Bandles VIP, but if we're going to get a Weeble Wobble EP, at least go all out. Give me the original Eliminate Weeble Wobble, give me the original Bandles one, give me the spoken word version, I don't care. Give me like an acoustic version or something ridiculous like that, I want it all. Okay, first of all, who asked for this album, honestly? Who asked Matt Duke to go and make a collection of generic bass music tunes? Especially when Matt Duke's not developed enough in that genre to really have any place making an album full of the stuff. That being said, I do actually quite enjoy some of the hard dance influence tunes that come in toward the tail end of this album. I think they honestly might be some of his most well-made work in years, but for the most part, for me, not an album experience really worth experiencing. And yeah, that's about going to do it for this edition of Rapid Fire Reviews. Uh, as always, I have the Spotify links for every single album and EP that I talked about in order down in the description below. If you have any thoughts or opinions on any of the projects that I talked about in this video, feel free to write them down in the comment section below. And if you have any suggestions for albums to review this month or rapid fire review next month, uh, be sure to leave those as well. If you're new to the channel and you wanna see more content like this, make sure to consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed the video overall, make sure to leave me a like. Anyway, I'm Landon Remixes, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.